Hello, my name is Shamima Sigder. I'm an assistant professor at the Wilmer I Institute, and I have the pleasure of reporting from the 2013 AAO annual meeting and have the opportunity to speak with John Kanilopoulos about collagen cross-linking. John, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here today. A lot of people are very excited about collagen cross-linking and the potential that it has. And one of the key questions that everyone seems to be asking is epithelium on or epithelium off? Thank you, Sanima, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here as well. Uh, it's, it's really a valid question, and obviously everybody can appreciate the advantages of being able to do cross-linking epithelium on. Um, my background is that I've seen several cases epithelium on go on to progressive ectasia. So I was, up until recently, uh, should I say significantly biased on doing epi off as uh, this was the standard technique that has most of the scientific evidence behind it. And uh, we have vast experience on this over the last uh, 10 years, mostly outside the U.S., of course. Uh, we're seeing data, though, now with uh, recent work that uh, using uh, higher fluence and higher amounts of energy cross-linking within the cornea to be able to uh, accomplish similar results with epioff. So I think that's very good news. Well, that sounds fantastic. So do you have any comments or insights on any upcoming studies maybe in the works? Well, there's several studies that are maturing uh, in the U.S. Um, there's a study that uh, has begun looking into LASIK extra. Um, and this is uh, a technique where at the finishing at the end of a LASIK procedure, uh, the open stroma is exposed to riboflavin for a few seconds, then the flap repositioned, and then very high fluence cross-linking used to travel through the flap and cross-link the residual cornea. Uh, internationally, we have seen uh, significant advantages to stabilizing younger high myopes, and uh, we have seen significant advantages in combining LASIK extra with uh, hyperopic LASIK. Uh, it almost seems that... Uh, in my opinion, you have to combine the two to get uh, long-term stability in hyperopia where keratometric stability is elusive after the first few years. Um, the initial uh, data seem promising, but of course, like with any study, we have to wait to see the uh, results on that. Sure. And in your practice, do you find that there are patients in whom you don't recommend LASIK Plus? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, we select patients in, in an area where keratoconus is endemic, yes. uh, I identify in the area that I practice that one out of every 50, 50 young males do have some uh, topographic signs of keratoconus. Uh, and this is uh, really in contrast to uh, most of the peer review literature on the incidence of keratoconus. So in a population where keratoconus is so rampant, if I can use the term, uh, we tend to... Uh, use LASIK extra in all younger patients who have uh, astigmatism that's asymmetric between the two eyes, one eye half diopter, one eye one and a half, um, in patients who uh, have high myopia, over six diopters. As I mentioned, all patients that have uh, hyperopia, that mm -hmm. we do hyperopic LASIK. Uh, but I want to make it clear that we don't employ LASIK extra in eyes that have from first keratoconus. I think uh, there's no place for that in... Uh, uh, cases where it's uh, questionable whether there is keratoconus evident or not, in those cases I would prefer a surface uh, treatment. And so how often do you find that you recommend PRK with collagen cross-linking? Well, the only, uh, the only occasion that we employ uh, PRK with cross-linking is uh, in an attempt to normalize a very regular surface. Uh, and of course this is done internationally because uh, uh, topo-guided PRK is not uh, yet uh, implemented in the U.S. It just became approved by the FDA for two companies. Um, but we have used it internationally for over 10 years. And uh, in, in this combination technique, we're using uh, topography-guided PRK platform, but not as a refractive solution. Uh, it's actually uh, common that this approach increases the myopia of, of the patient. Because uh, uh, with this technique, the attempt is to try and normalize a very regular uh, surface, and usually the central cornea is steepened a little bit uh, in an attempt to flatten the area that's paracentrally uh, steep in keratoconus, for example. Um, we employ it a lot, 
uh, in a lot of young keratoconic patients that show progression and the consideration for cross-linking is made and the decision is made, uh, it is my personal opinion, my recommendation to try and normalize the cornea surface uh, some, of course, with proper informed consent. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, we look forward to having uh, trials in the U.S. in order to establish the uh, uh, efficacy and safety of this uh, uh, method, but uh, internationally uh, it's used uh, pretty much in every continent of the world. I think looking forward to when we finally have the opportunity here in the U.S. to use collagen cross-linked implants, very, very excited. Yes, and I think uh, we're approaching uh, that time. Uh, I, th I personally think that within 2004 we might see uh, uh, more and more of it. Uh, what's exciting is that uh, in our uh, research team uh, we're now not only looking at collagen cross-linking as what has been established internationally, a way to stabilize corneas from progressive ectasia, but we're trying to more specifically study and possibly implement the refractive changes that collagen cross-linking can induce in the cornea and possibly in a normal cornea. Um, and uh, we often speak uh, about disease regression when we look at uh, uh, topography maps of uh, post-lasic ectasia or keratoconus improving, quote-unquote, with time. Uh, but I think uh, we should better consider that a, if I can use the term, crude refractive effect of that stabilization. And we're doing work uh, that we presented uh, here at the American Academy at the uh, uh, ISRS uh, refractive subspecialty meeting. Uh, where now we have uh, evidence four months old, it's not very old, but it's significant that uh, applying customized, v extremely high fluence collagen cross-linking in uh, normal corneas can have predictable, uh, customized refractive effects, both of the myopic flavor, hyperopic, and also toric. That's fantastic. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the use of collagen cross-linking for infectious keratitis. It's, it's a very interesting application, and uh, I think that beyond uh, its application in the U.S. and in Europe where I uh, practice, uh, I think it will have a tremendous uh, impact in uh, countries where uh, antibiosis, uh, patient uh, compliance, and the ability to uh, get access to uh, medical care is very, uh, very compromised. Uh, I know there's a lot of interest. We've seen a lot of uh, publications on this. I think it's very promising. Uh, we've seen uh, a group from the U.S., uh, uh, Frank Price and this group uh, uh, published recently some uh, very nice results on uh, guidelines on how to uh, employ collagen cross-linking as an adjunct or even prim primary treatment of infectious keratitis. And I think that uh, this really opens a new horizon uh, for, uh, if I can use the term, for a cheap drug, a cheap intervention uh, that can uh, reduce uh, the terrible implications of uh, infectious keratitis globally. So as 2014 approaches, what excites you most about the potential for collagen cross-linking? Well, uh, we obviously want to see this procedure uh, pass the landmark of being FDA approved because the world knows that uh, until a technology becomes FDA approved and comes into uh, formal studies in the U.S., large numbers, uh, good methodology will validate and maybe add more to the innovation of this technique. And I think this is an element in collagen cross-linking that has been missing all these years. Uh, we've been doing the best we can in Europe and internationally, but uh, this is a big void uh, in uh, the validity and the efficacy and the uh, innovation of this uh, technique. So I, I hope that 2014 is going to be the year of course, uh, I'm a, uh, um, I'm a uh, bystander uh, watching this process. We're very much interested in uh, working more in the infectious keratitis field and also the uh, studying and potentially being able to better uh, implement uh, refractive changes um, in uh, normal corneas, uh, which uh, would really, uh, if this comes true and, and we have... Uh, uh, clinical validation uh, offered an alternate refractive procedure. Uh, we will be able to correct uh, possibly small refractive errors on the cornea 
uh, without uh, incising, without removing the epithelium. Uh, it's very exciting. It is a very exciting time. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much as well.